Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're gonna go over the tool of strip silence and how it can help clean up a live set. Every year, there's a music festival that happens in Philadelphia that's called This Is Hardcore, and it's filmed by the website Hate56. I actually work alongside the guys over at Hate56 and Landmine Studios, and we get the raw multitracks of those live concerts and mix them for video to release on hate56.com. In this session, I'm gonna show you how to use strip silence to clean up those vocals to let the music ride through because this is a live show. Let's dive into the DAW and take a look. So here we are in this session and what we're gonna do is our cleanup work right here on this lead vocal. Our red track right here is our lead vocal and this is the guy we're gonna pay attention to. With this band, there was actually only one vocalist for the entire set. So it makes things a lot easier, but this concept can be used on any kind of track, whether it be vocals, instruments, percussion, maybe some synth, Anytime you want to get rid of the empty spaces in between parts, you can use strip silence. So like I said before, this was from a live show and all of this noise over here and all of this noise over here is just all crowd noise and room noise. It's really nothing nice. And that's in our lead vocal channel. Now, obviously we can't go back and re-record because this was a live set. So what we can do is use strip silence to get all of the in-between parts out and really clean up this vocal. So on our top toolbar, we're gonna hit this button for strip silence and it opens up our dialog box. And in here, there's lots of predetermined default settings. I just wanna show you how the concept works, so we'll use the preset. And we're gonna go with lots of silence. So you can see it grayed out our threshold because it's using the default numbers that PreSonus has. Then here for events, it can actually tell you how much time the minimum amount of length for any event can be. So right now I have it for 0.25 seconds or 250 milliseconds. Next is your pre and your post roll, which tells Studio One when it makes these events to actually add a little bit of the extra space around it. So it'll give a buffer of 0.25 or whatever your settings are of pre roll and 0.25 or your settings for post roll then this link here will actually throw a fade in and fade out of that same amount of time onto that new region. So that your now pre-roll and post-roll will also have the same length of a fade in or fade out on the. If you unclick this, you can then dictate how much of a fade in or fade out you want on all of your regions. I'm gonna leave mine connected and then we're just gonna hit apply. So according to these settings, it cut out a lot of the noise on the tops and tails of our events, but it still found that it thought that these points were above the threshold. With lots of silence, it's actually the highest threshold of our automatic detection circuits. And you can see that a few things still were able to get through. Studio One thought that these signals here were part of the noises that we wanted in this source. If you find this is happening with even lots of silence and things are getting past the threshold, you may wanna switch over to manual. You'll have to undo and then redo this process. But depending on your project, you may just go ahead and delete all the little extras or really refine your threshold to get just everything that you need and you want. Now that it's actually stripped our silence, let's take a look at the region and we'll zoom way in. So you can see because of our pre and post roll, and our fade in link. We now have a fade into our new region that is 250 milliseconds. Now compared to what we had earlier, we got rid of all of that additional ambience that we didn't need in our lead vocal mic. And now we just have the clean signal of the vocalist when he's doing his thing. And everything in between is taken out. Now, because this was recorded at a live show, and I've done a number of these already, I know that the singers at these shows like to dip the mic into the crowd. So I go in and I manually go through and make sure I didn't cut off any fan from screaming into the lead vocalist's mic. When this gets cut to video later, you're gonna wanna be able to see that person grab the mic, put it right to their face, and sing just as loud as the vocalist was. That's all for now. If you found this video informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com, and if you have a question, ask it in a comment, and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.